This is the most stylish machine I've made to date. I took a picture of a cast iron pulley and uh, using uh, GIMP uh, was able to make a black and white relief of it and then I just printed it out and cut around it. And then using a scroll saw, I cut that pattern out onto real thin pieces of uh, hobby wood and uh, sandwiched them together with the inside circles being a smaller diameter than the outside circles. And the result was this pulley, these pulleys here that are made to look very decorative, um, shaped like old cast iron pulleys. And they turn opposite directions at the same time. It uses Buma cord. It's loose right now, so it's slipping a lot, which uh, affects the performance. But the main thing is the glass disc I made this out of, and I've made things out of glass discs before. I drilled the hole too big for the axle, and then I put it on a record player turntable and moved it around until I got it balanced. Um, and so, until I could see that the, the, the disc was balanced, and then I put the uh, boss on there, which is just a wooden, uh, like a sewing spool, but it's made out of wood. You get it in the hobby section of a store. And uh, that wooden spool, I could then put that on there in the center once I saw it was centered on that record player. But unfortunately, the glass disc cracked after I made it at some point. I have no idea why or how. Um, I wouldn't give it to someone now because I don't trust it with a cracked disc. I would be afraid that it would uh, the disc would come apart and possibly hurt somebody. It's not that it spins that fast. It's just not a very... Uh, Good thing to do, not a good idea. Here's the deal with the Leyden jars. This is something I don't recommend for just anybody, especially if you're using a Benetti machine, which is very powerful, but it's just steel wool down inside of there with corks. These are cup hooks. I took the uh, little wooden uh, beads I bought out of the uh, hobby section of Walmart. You can get them there. You can get them at Hobby Lobby. I took and rolled using the uh, rolled glass method, that I call, as I call it, and roll aluminum foil on there to make them look like they're metal balls. And as you can see, it's coupled through a cork with a nail and the nail goes down into the steel wool. The steel wool forms the inside plate. The outside plate is just aluminum tape in this case. And uh, insulation on the interior of those jars is not that important because you don't have leakage, coronal leakage in there. And if you had steel wool on the outside of these charged collectors and the, the metal that goes to the output terminals, the steel wool would leak a tremendous amount of charge into the air. It's not a problem inside these jars. It, to me, it does not appear to significantly affect performance. And at the same time, it's just so much easier. However, steel wool can catch fire. That's always something to keep in mind. It is important and worth noting. I've had it do it with Benetti machines before. Of course, with limited oxygen, the fire goes out quickly, but it is something worth noting. The neutralizer bars actually come out of here and I actually threaded on nuts on the end here and drilled holes in the center of these nuts and the wire actually protrudes out of there and it's and of course the nut threads is threaded onto the rod and the wire is just wound in there it would probably be better if you cut a notch in the threads and put the wire in that notch ideally that would be the best thing because the threads as you screw that on will cut the wire and the wire just falls out i've used glass disc in the past and the cracks would occur near the middle, they work fine. It doesn't keep the machine from working. It's, it's not exactly the safest thing in the world. It's not something you'd want to give away to people or something. There's no grease on this machine. It's grease free, all free. What I did is I took a piece of wax, canning wax actually, and rubbed the wax, just rubbed it like you'd rub an eraser on a piece of paper on the axle and the wax makes lubricates the axle and keeps it from squeaking and makes it where it turns. Uh, that's pretty significant because it was squeaking real bad before I did that. But wax in this case was an excellent alternative over grease or oil, which gets real messy. And certainly if it gets on your disc, it's going to uh, affect the performance of the machine. The, the disc have to generally be very clean. Wax is a good alternative for lubrication for this kind of machine. These uh, pulleys right here are have an, a, a bolt for an axle that I bent with a torch. And I actually took a piece of, uh, I guess, acrylic here it is. Um, uh, polycarbonate would probably be better, something that's easier to cut, but I took a piece of acrylic and drilled a hole in it, and that actually serves as uh, support structure here. But it works, 
and it would squeak real, real bad. It's starting to squeak a little bit again, but you can make it quit squeaking by putting lubricating it with the wax, like I mentioned. You don't melt the wax. You just rub the wax on there like you would rub chalk on a Q-stick. You just rub it on there and let it, let it you know, smear it on there at room temperature. Anyway, that's, uh, whew, that's about it. I can't really add much else to this. This is impromptu, and uh, I apologize for the lack of organization on my part, but this is a machine I built that uh, is really built more than anything for, for to be attractive and not just be um, not just to be a with symmetrical balls like this it's not going to be it's not going to produce real real long sparks one way to do that or to assure that it happens at all times is to have smaller balls on top of the larger balls i call them primary and secondary balls and in that way you can get very very long sparks very easily